This weekend, it features a U.S. military veteran repeating a claim that President Trump called dead U.S. soldiers losers and suckers. My friends, they are not suckers. But did the president say it? This controversy pits unnamed sources who say he did against eyewitnesses who have said publicly that he did not. It's based on a story in The Atlantic, and the claim against the president has become a staple at Biden and Harris rallies. If you, uh, if you put your life on the line for the nation, you're a loser, a sucker. He calls them losers and suckers. Suckers and losers. Losers and suckers. The president called the allegation against him a disgrace. Who would say a thing like that? Only an animal would say a thing like that. There's nobody that has more respect for not only our military, but for people that gave their lives in the military. The claim is based on anonymous sources. The writer of the Atlantic piece, editor-in-chief Jeffrey Goldberg, told MSNBC the sources were afraid to come forward publicly. There's a fear on a kind of a superficial level of of a Twitter mob. Um, there's also real fear of personal safety, fear for your family. But five people who were with the president at the time say the Atlantic story is false. Senior advisor Stephen Miller, deputy communications director Dan Scavino, former White House aide Jordan Carroll, former press secretary Sarah Sanders, who called the Atlantic story total BS. Even former national security advisor John Bolton, who's not on the best of terms with Trump, said of the report. That was simply false. I don't know who told the author that, but that was false. Conservative media critic Tim Graham says the article can't be trusted. They're looking for whatever source will give them the thesis they want. And if they can't get them from, from people on the record, they will use them off the record. And the problem with the anonymous sources is you really have zero idea of who they are. There are other reasons for concern. The magazine endorsed Hillary Clinton for president in 2016 while calling Trump a demagogue, a xenophobe, a sexist, a know-nothing, and a liar. The Atlantic's majority owner, Lauren Powell Jobs, has reportedly donated over $1.2 million to Democratic candidates and groups since 2019. Records also show Jobs contributed $2,800 to Joe Biden's primary campaign and over $600,000 to the Biden Victory Fund. She also reportedly gave the maximum allowed donation to more than 60 other Democratic politicians since the start of last year while apparently giving nothing to Republicans. We asked The Atlantic if it had ever run an anonymously sourced story that attacked Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton. The magazine did not respond. Meanwhile, support for the president among members of the military is down from 2016. Whatever the reason for it, The Atlantic article certainly hasn't helped the president. Dale Hurd, CBN News.